What are room resonances? Resonances are frequencies that linger too long in a room, often with unpleasant consequences for the sound happening in that room. Bass resonances can produce muddiness or boominess, where mid-range and treble resonances can produce harshness or intelligibility or clarity issues. One of the main goals in acoustically treating a space is to reduce the negative impact of resonances have on the sound in that room. Resonances usually happen at specific frequencies. Frequency is a measurement based off of time. The hertz indicates how many times per second the wave cycles. If we multiply that by the speed of sound, we can derive the wavelength, which is the physical distance for the complete evolution of the wave. If we play a sound wave in a space with the same dimensions as the wavelength of sound, then that sound will reflect off the surfaces of the room and overlap with itself. When sound waves overlap, the energy gets combined and creates phase interference. An in-phase sound wave overlapping itself will suffer from constructive interference, where the peaks and troughs of the wave are enhanced and the sound becomes stronger. Every rectangular room will have three main axial room modes that correspond to the depth, width, and height of the room, but other modes and resonances can develop based off of more complex geometry. We have a whole video on room modes if you'd like to learn more. Keep in mind that your room isn't the only thing that can cause resonances. Certain instruments will have notes that resonate more when played based off the geometry of the instrument. Vocal recordings often show resonances through harshness or muddiness in the mid-range, with certain frequencies being too loud. These resonances can then affect compression, saturation, and EQ that are typically applied to vocal recordings in a mix and make it harder to process them for de the desired tone. So how do you know where a resonance is coming from? The first step in finding and eliminating a resonance is to test your room. This will give you a better understanding of where in terms of frequency the resonances are in the room in general and also at what specific listening spots. For low-end resonances, look at time-based data that shows decay time for frequency, like a waterfall graph or spectrogram. A simple, more practical, real-world test you can do is test with filtered pink noise. GIK provides one online where all of the frequencies down to 400 Hz are played at once. With filtered pink noise playing throughout your system, you can move around the room and listen or measure with an SPL meter for the louder frequencies that would indicate a resonance. Good placement for speakers and listening position in a room can help avoid resonances, but a comprehensive bass strategy is the real way to combat them. Typical broadband and or range-limited bass traps are the best place to begin, though we can also use tuned scopus traps to target specific resonances under 100 Hz. Tune traps are meant to treat resonances that remain once the main bass trapping strategy is in place. GIK has a lot more information on bass trapping if you'd like to learn more. For resonances in the mid-range and treble, often the culprit has to do with early reflections. This topic has also been well covered in GIK's educational materials, but reflected sound waves interfere with new sound waves being created, you'll get cancellation and resonances causing some frequencies to be louder and linger longer in the room. So treating the room for early reflections, both in recording and in listening and mixing scenarios, can reduce this interference and give you a more natural and accurate sound. If you'd like a more natural and accurate sound for your room and you're not sure how to get there, visit GIKacoustics.com where you can find tons of useful tools, articles, and videos as well as our free acoustic advice form that lets you get details of your room over to our team of designers so that they can give you the very best possible sound for your space.